Hey, Seattle hockey fans, Erica L. Ayala here, your host of Locked on Kraken. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. We are officially in the off season, which means we're coming to you at least three times a week, maybe a little more depending on what we've got in store. On today's episode, I'm going to take you back to my conversation with Jay Foster about the most recent transaction Oliver Bjorkstrand to the Seattle Kraken. We're going to get a little bit more into Morgan Geeky. And then I hope you watched Welcome to the NHL because we have another special guest. I'll let you know about all of that and more on this episode of Locked on Kraken. You are Locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken. Again, this is our off-season content, so you'll see us coming to you at least three times a week. We're going to try to hit Monday, Wednesday, Friday for you every week. Just a little update for those who watch, but who are though for those who are watching and who listen regularly, thanks as always for making Locked on Kraken your first listen of the day. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, which I highly recommend, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got additional content up there. Uh, that doesn't make its way to our audio platforms. So head over to Locked On Kraken, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know every time we upload. But um, if you're watching on YouTube, then you might have noticed this ticker. I'm going to get rid of my name here, and we will be using the ticker below for your most up to date Kraken news, our What's Kraken news, and of course, our hockey roundup, the news around the NHL. So if you look at the ticker right now, you can see that you can follow us on social media on Locked on Kraken. But of course, the news that came in after we recorded the last episode, um, well, actually, let's start with the news that came in while I was recording the last episode. We got this update on Sunday. That was our Monday show. But Morgan Geeky, uh, has agreed to a one-year, $1.4 million uh, contract with the Seattle Kraken. And also, thank you for the YouTube comment checking me. I made some assumptions about uh, RFAs and arbitration in particular for the NHL. Sometimes I get my leagues a little confused and arbitration a little bit different in the NHL than what I'm used to. So I appreciate the comment. Yes, Geeky was always coming back. Thank you very much for that. And now we have the terms. Uh, this is what general manager Ron Francis had to say. Morgan set several career highs last season and we're happy to re-sign him. He took an important step forward last year and we're looking forward to him continuing his growth with the Kraken. In the 21-22 campaign, he had seven goals, 15 assists for 22 points overall in 73 games played. That is a career high in goals, assists, points, power play points at four, and games played, 73. Um, so he had a 52.5% win rate at the faceoff dot, um, and this uh, he had a 52.3 Corsi percentage. So Geeky coming back. I've talked about it before. I talked about it a little bit with Jay on Monday's show. Geeky wasn't my favorite player. Not a lot of members of the Seattle Kraken had stellar performances. Yes, some of them did have season highs in certain uh, categories, but we also have to remember the last handful of seasons were minimized because of COVID. Um, and there's definitely opportunity. That being said, it didn't all come together. So Geeky, I know the Geek Squad is really happy. I'm happy for you. Am I over the moon about this, especially knowing that this, uh, not this move, but just everything that transpired probably means that Donato's not coming back. I can't say that I'm thrilled that Donato is not coming back, if, in, if indeed that is the case, but it's looking like Donato's not coming back, and I personally would take Donato over Geeky, but, you know, I'm not mad. We will talk a little bit more about the Bjorkstrand um, 
kind of circumstances. Again, Jay Foster is going to join us again. This is the this is the last few minutes of our conversation. So, th you know, that was a hard cut. Anyone who thought I, I just did that as a little bit of a tease playing around, it was it absolutely intentional. So apologies if that threw everyone off. It was more of a stylistic choice than anything. You know, you got to keep it fun. Keep you on your toes. Keep you wanting more. And we will have more. So we're not going to talk too much about Bjorkstrand, but we, we can talk about also on the ticker. And Cap Friendly was reporting this on Monday. So before the show uploaded, we had already seen reports that uh, defenseman uh, Kempney uh, was coming to the Seattle Kraken. That was made official Monday um, early morning in Seattle, late morning here on the East Coast. And that's the 32 year old is on a one year contract, 750 K AAV. It's coming over from um, the Capitals, has played with the Caps and the Blackhawks. So, um, hearing good things, I like that we have a defenseman with size, six foot one, 195 pounds from Shezhnia. Um, Played in three world championships. I've talked about it before. I like international experience. So he played in the world championships 2016, 17, and 2022, where he won a bronze medal. Also competed in the World Cup of Hockey in the 2016-17 season. So uh, has played in the KHL. Uh, I think this will be good. And we'll see what we get with that signing. All right. So. I want to get you ready for the last part of my conversation with Jay. This is more of us talking about, okay, the Seattle Kraken have made these moves. We've got Geeky, we've got Bjorkstrand, a, a, a plethora, or like I said, a, you know, a taste the rainbow Skittles bag worth of picks, even though we traded over some picks. So what does this mean for the Seattle Kraken? And I love that, Jay, and you might probably heard a little bit of this on the last episode, but we get into it a little bit more like, listen, um, <laughs> respectfully, he covers a team that is not an original six team that has been an expansion team and knows what it's like to be bad as an expansion team. So we get a little bit more into that conversation. That's what's coming up next. And then that's our second stanza, as I like to say, and we will close out the show. I have told you about welcome to the NHL and we have the chief content officer that is going to join us on the show. Now this is going to be audio. For those who are watching on video, I'll do what I did for the Jessica Campbell interview. We'll have a still shot on your on your screen. And the reason that we did this, we just had some technical issues and glitches. Imagine that. I get the chief content officer to agree to come on Locked on Kraken, and we can't get a good connection. What a world, what a world. So similarly to what we did with Jay, I'm going to keep this show as close to 30 minutes as possible. So there might be just a few minutes that we'll get into for Friday's show. We'll get a little bit more into some of the things that I spoke to Steve Mayer about. So we're going to split a little bit of his conversation today, Wednesday, and a little bit of it on Friday's episode of Locked on Kraken. Um, so coming up next on Locked on Kraken, we're going to hear from Jay Foster. Again, that is our host of Locked on Blue Jackets. Before I take you over to Jay, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online is the easiest way to check on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and your favorite events, and it is the number one source for your odds, your lines, and the games. Find reviews and news of every league. That includes, of course, the NHL, Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, and your favorite combat sports. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in game betting scores and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to the bet, head to betonline.com, excuse me, head to betonline.net today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, Kraken fans, I want to take you to the rest of my conversation with Jay Foster, but also check out the show notes because um, 
the amazing Jeff Baker for the Seattle Times, Kraken's Ron Francis leverage cap space in game-changing Oliver Bjorkstrand trade. And so you've heard from Jay. Jay and I talked about it. You heard a little bit about that on Monday. But Jeff breaking down what this means, um, including, quote, Francis acquired a player whose 28 goals and 57 points last season were more than anybody had managed in a Kraken uniform. So there you go. If we can get that same productivity or even more, as Jay had mentioned to us, um, that could be a good go. But like I said, let's get to the rest of my conversation with Jay Foster before we head over to Steve Mayer, Chief Content Officer for the National Hockey League, talking about welcome to the NHL. I think people, people saw Vegas succeed and were like, well, Seattle's going to do the same thing. And Vegas was some kind of weird, I don't know, Vegas. They made some kind of devil deal, like <laughs> Sin City type thing to to be good immediately, you know? Um, we talked about this a little bit off mic, though, as well. Um, I don't know that Seattle is going to be good next season. And that's not to say that they won't win games. I don't think that they're going to play a style of hockey that makes them a playoff contender i think they'll be a lot more fun this season i think adding oliver bjorkstrand specifically he's such a fun player to watch um and if you can get 30 goals out of him then you know that's 30 goals that he didn't have last season and you gave up two draft picks for him so you know it's it's <laughs> it's a win um yeah the other thing as well is this is something i was talking about with a friend actually the pacific division is not very strong anyway mm -hmm. And we were looking at the teams in the Pacific, like, okay, Edmonton's probably going to be in the playoffs. Los Angeles is probably going to make the playoffs. Um, Calgary got demonstrably worse. This <laughs> obviously, obviously losing Gaudreau, losing Kachuk a week later, like they've gone from being a lock-in for the playoffs to yeah. maybe making a wild card. So mm -hmm. immediately there's a gap. Seattle, I think, got better, especially you're adding Beneers and Shane Wright, which, I mean... We could do a whole episode about the the attitude problem and how that's not even like Shane Wright's attitude is like the the 13th worst thing that I've been worried <laughs> about this off season, you know? <laughs> like it's it's, Truly. it's fine. <laughs> between him and Beniz, who I think Beniz is gonna I, I think he's gonna create waves in this division this season. I think he's gonna be a real problem specifically. But I think having those two guys who come in and like like that's the that's such a cool narrative having this american and this canadian come into the league together as kids tear this place up seattle got better this off season calgary got worse um i don't know if any other team in the division got notably better or worse like vegas will probably be a little bit better if they can stay healthy and manage to figure out their cap situation vancouver will probably be about the same but like there's some wiggle room there for if the Kraken get hot. Yeah. They could uh, they could sneak their way into that third seed or <clears throat> Yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk about it because that's so important and a lot of what we've been hearing um, at least when it, when it comes to other experts and the Seattle Kraken how they can improve, it definitely is by focusing on their positioning in the division. And I think you mentioned some teams that obviously have had their roster kind of blown up. Um, who knows what's happening with San Jose? Um, but, you know, San Jose's I... going to be bad. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. San Jose's going to be at the bottom of the division. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's oh, fine. Mike, we're rooting for you, Mike. I mean, in like a... Just we your, are. I'm, yeah. I'm, I really want Mike to succeed. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't know. So we'll see. Season, we'll see what but... happens there. But I think I think that there's so many valid points. Like, let's focus on winning the games that we can, and we didn't do that. I, I would say we're like a teenager. We're we're inconsistent. You can tell a teenager something, and you know that they're old enough to hear you. Like they can hear you, and they should, in theory, be old enough to understand you. But sometimes it's just like boop. You know, they are and hearing you, but they are like. not listening to you. Is how it yeah, is. Yeah, it just is like it, like the comprehension has been turned mm -hmm. off. So, um, the the synthesis, you know, not happening. But um, so I'm I'm curious. I think 
I want to see at minimum a more disciplined Seattle Kraken team. And although some of these contracts appear to be bridge contracts, there are veterans that we brought in on those kind of bridge contracts, um, you know, and that I think will be able to, or at least players that even like Bjorkstrand, who's had time in the NHL there, I, I get the sense that at least if, if these are like, you know, solid guys, which again, Seattle Kraken all about character, you know, these are going to be guys that they're not playing child's games. They're not going to, Except, I mean, you, we heard uh, Schwartz and Everly, the frustration that they would exude after games and not targeted at anyone specifically, but knowing that we can't do this. We can't do this and expect to win games. It was a very clear message with the understanding that, yes, the Vegas Golden Knights were an exception in a lot of ways for expansion teams. But putting that narrative to the side, even if we were an original six team, it doesn't matter. There are things that the Seattle Kraken did as a team or didn't do for that matter that you cannot expect to do and win games in the National Hockey League. You just can't. Bad exits, bad entries, terrible defense, you know, uh, in front of Grubauer, who, again, already seemed uncomfortable. I, I just don't know that. Uh, but I guess we'll go back to uh, we had Linda Kahn on the show and she's like, listen, Erica, you know, it can only go up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> She's not wrong. She said she said it can only go up. So that's the good news. And she said, you know, uh, but everyone loved the arena. The arena's great. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I feel better. <laughs> there you go. Everyone loves Climate Pledge Arena, and it can't get any worse than the inaugural season. And if it does, we got heads have got to roll. <laughs> yeah, you don't be you don't want to be having this conversation next season next off season yeah. but I, I genuinely and this is not me you know pandering because i'm on locked on kraken like i do <laughs> genuinely think the kraken will be a lot better this season um so these too. these are guys that have you know they've had a season to play together now you've brought in some really good pieces again i'm biased but i really do genuinely think oliver bjorkstrand is going to be a really integral piece to this team uh he wore an a for parts of the season he's it feels extremely I feel like the Crypt Keeper when I'm like, he's a veteran in this league because he's like 27 I and know. that makes me feel a million years old. But, you know, he's been here. He knows how this works. He's played on very bad teams before. He played on the Blue Jackets for the entirety of his career before this point, you know? He, I think, I don't know that he's going to be a game changer in the way that, you know, some elite players are, but I do genuinely think that he will mm -hmm. make the Kraken a better team simply by being there. And that's interesting that you say that. And we'll, we'll, we'll wrap our squad cast on this because I think the Seattle Kraken are still holding out for a game changer. And it makes me wonder what Ronnie Francis is doing, you know, and with his crystal sessions where maybe he has an idea of finding someone that does have that NHL experience and getting a, a game changer, a game changing veteran. I still believe in a game changing veteran in sports. I really don't think it matters what sport. There's obviously a tipping point, but when you're ready to get serious about making a deep run, not just getting to the playoffs, but going deep into the playoffs, and then of course winning a championship, winning a Stanley Cup, you don't do that without veterans on your squad, period, point blank. So we're a young team. We're working on Shane Wright and Maddie Beneers, no guarantees, but every sign points to Ron Francis and the, and the squad expecting them to be in the NHL this season. That's another great thing about Shane Wright. This kid, I mean, he's petitioned to play hockey when he was, uh, you know, too young. So this, this is a hockey guy. Like, he's chomping at the bit. And so, you know, we'll see what that attitude versus hunger and drive um, what that balance is. But I think overall, we still need that veteran presence. And I'm very curious to see what the next few years of that three to five year swing for the Seattle Kraken is going to look like. But we will take care of your boy, 
Oliver's Please. with us now. Can I just, I need the Kraken fans <laughs> to be good to Oliver Bjorkstrand because it will upset me personally if anyone is mean to him. <laughs> and and I see, I see me. all of your tweets, Kraken fans. <laughs> I will see them and I will come for you if you oh. say bad things about my boy. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're, it's not that kind of party. We're all about the good vibes, at least for now, while we can still ride the, the wave of newness. Yeah. So we're excited. But Jay, thank you so much for joining us to talk a little bit about Oliver Bjorkstrand, who will now be with the Seattle Kraken. Of course, now that you've listened to Locked on Kraken, you have to go listen to Locked on Blue Jackets and Jay and his amazing show. But then after that, make sure you're also listening to our Locked on NHL show. Jay and I, we focus obviously on our specific teams, but you can listen to the Locked on NHL experts give you Everything you need to know around the league in a 30-minute daily dose. Of course, that's available on audio podcasts, wherever you listen to audio podcasts, and over on YouTube. So subscribe to Locked on NHL. Subscribe on, to Locked on Columbus Blue Jackets. And, of course, make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Kraken. Until tomorrow, hold fast, stay true, Kraken fans, and we'll talk some hockey again tomorrow. Jay, thank you so much. You are so welcome. <laughs> Coming up next on Locked on Kraken, again, we're going to hear from, we're going to hear the first part of my conversation with Steve Mayer, who is a senior vice, senior executive vice president and the chief content officer at NHL.com. Again, apologies, we had some technical difficulties, so this will be audio only for those watching on YouTube, but we will have a, a still shot for you. For those on audio, you'll notice that it does sound like Steve is being on, is on speakerphone, because indeed he is. You're, I hope you enjoy this conversation. Steve and I had a really great conversation, and I'm going to tee you up for Friday show, because I did ask Steve what he thought some great you know, documentary worthy, content worthy storylines might be from this Seattle Kraken team. So if you want to hear that part of the interview, make sure you tune in for Friday's episode. Without further ado, though, let I'm going to take you to some of our sponsors and then you will hear my conversation with Steve Mayer, the chief content officer at the National Hockey League. I have a special guest for Seattle Kraken fans. We have Steve Mayer. He is the executive vice president and chief content officer at the National Hockey League and one of the minds behind Welcome to the NHL, which of course featured our uh, first overall pick or first round pick, I should say, and fourth overall pick, Shane Wright. Steve, how are we today? We're good today. Uh, thanks for having me, Eric. Oh, absolutely. We talked about um, welcome to the NHL and we had some assets sent our way so we could really uh, hype up this documentary. So we are excited to have you as we were talking offline. Um, just an exciting draft overall, but certainly the Seattle Kraken were right in the mix. So we are thrilled to have you on the show. <laughs> Well, listen, it's great to be here, and the draft, obviously, you just never know how it's going to turn out and how it's going to turn, yes. and I think for Kraken fans, it, it turned in a really unique and very cool direction, and this show absolutely shows that turn of events. Um, you know, obviously, we were, we're going to follow the top players, and, you know, in this draft, there were... There were five top players that, you know, a lot of people said were interchangeable among the top five picks. I don't think, I don't think anybody felt that Shane Wright, who was projected, you know, up until a couple of weeks before as the absolute number one overall pick, that he would fall to four. Uh, but he did. And, you know, he fell right into the laps of the Kraken and Ron Francis. And, you know, I, I think it's a great pick, you know. Uh, and it was just a really cool process. You know, drafts are amazing. You know, you sit there and you, you watch, you know, how in one moment, you know, some young man's future is determined where he's going, where he might be the rest of his career. You just never know. And, and how 
you know, here was somebody who who came down the red carpet just a few hours earlier thinking he was going to probably play in Montreal, thinking he could be the number one pick, and he ended up in Seattle. And and the show, I think, shows how happy he was to, to find out that he's going to Seattle. I, I think it's a great pick for the Kraken. Yeah, I think you hit on so much there. And I think you're absolutely right from watching the documentary. And we talked about this on the show before. You know, there was a lot that was going through Shane's mind and trying to stay level headed and going through everything in real time. Those are not always the same thing. Uh, but he had his family there, I think. Simon Wright. Uh, and it was great. We talked about this on the show as well. It was great to see the lead up in the, the hotel rooms as the families were getting ready. And then also to see on the draft floor because as someone who covers the Seattle Kraken we had been hearing you know and 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 Shane was asked a lot what did your dad say and there was that great clip about uh you know Simon Wright kind of knowing that there would be probably an opportunity for him to be on camera figuring out what he was going to say to his son and so to kind of see that uh, thought process in the hotel room and then how it started changing on the draft floor. I mean, it was amazing. It was really, really great storytelling. And to that end, uh, Locked on Kraken fans know I call this my uh, brown sugar question. It comes from the movie of that same name. Uh, but I'm going to remix this a little bit for you, Steve. Uh, as we talked about offline, I know that you went to Ithaca College. That's the alma mater of my mother. So shout out to mom. <laughs> Um, but I, so- <laughs> I, I, I shout out on uh, my behalf to your mom. Well. Oh yes, absolutely. She's gonna She's love a that. Bomber. That's uh, right. Like a college bomber. <laughs> yeah, almost overlapped. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so you were there and you studied radio and TV. So, you know, it sounds like and it seems like you you kind of had um, an interest, at least in entertainment and, and storytelling in that way. So can you walk us through uh, how did you end up uh, being able to do storytelling for the National Hockey League? When did you catch the bug? Hi, well, it's a it's a really long story, and uh, and we don't have a, a lot of time, so I'll try to summarize in just in a short way. Listen, I've always been interested in sports. I was a okay athlete, but I was never going to be a professional. So yeah, you know, how do you how do you get into sports? Um, and I I thought through the route of television, and when I was at Ithaca, you know, I wanted to be on television, not um, behind it. Uh, but one thing led to another, and after years of trying on camera and and, and actually being somewhat successful, um, you know, I, I started doing more and more work behind the camera. And, and one thing has led to another, and I had some successes that um, that actually eventually led me to to IMG, which is for those in the audience probably the world's largest sports marketing agency, mm-hmm. and um, and I worked my way up uh, through the ranks of IMG to eventually run uh, the production unit of IMG for years. And, um, you know, we did all different sports and worked for all the various networks and it was great experience. And, and, and that experience actually led me to the NHL where while I was at IMG, we had relationships and worked for and with all the major leagues, major league baseball, basketball, football, and hockey, and and other leagues as well. But my relationship with the NHL, you know, started when I was at IMG. I'm always had an interest in producing events and and putting on television programs, not only, by the way, sports, but branched out into entertainment and music and concerts. and, and, um, and, And, you know, again, an opportunity presented itself, and I left IMG after 20 years. I worked there from 96 to 2016. And I've been at the NHL ever since. And when I came to the NHL, I came here to run the content department of the league. And, and since have been added um, the jobs of um, events and, and creative on the broadcasting side. You know, so working very closely with ESPN and Turner and Sportsnet. So yeah, there's the summary. I, I wow, I tried to make that quick, and, <laughs> and that's 30 years of you know a, a lot of work and and a lot of love. I mean, I, I love what I do. I have passion for what I do. Storytelling. I don't care whether it's short form, long form, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on a major television network. 
and it all comes down to content is king. Great content is what people are attracted to, what they watch, what they what they like want to lean into. And shows like Welcome to the NHL, you know, I, I think just give fans that behind the glimpse, that peek into a world that they don't normally see. And, and, you know, and, and just want to, you know, more and more. And, you know, our teams, our players give us access that is really incredible for a professional sports league. And we're really trying to lean in as much as we can to it at the NHL. And that's why these kind of shows attract fans. They're really interesting. People want more of them. And it's great when we, when we do it with, players that are brand new to the league you know great introduction to your fans and shane wright you know maybe it's their first time they've ever watched him or seen him and certainly they get to meet his mom and his dad and his family and you know I, we think that's pretty cool and it's just the start of what we think are you know going to be long careers in the nhl we hope that these players lean into storytelling and and open up their world to us because you know that's what our fans truly want as always, I want to thank you for listening to Locked on Kraken. We haven't done some of our wellness tips of the day, but I think one wellness tip that I would do is, and if I can harness the Hamilton soundtrack, take a break. All right. Working nonstop is not always the vibe. And so we here at the Locked On Network, we do have an off-season schedule and we are right now in the off-season. So uh, again, coming to you at minimum of three times a week and I'm gonna do my best. And this is my uh, commitment. I'm gonna try and honor that, I really am. So uh, I hope you can take a break, enjoy the summer months, the heat wave, at least here on the East Coast. It seems to, to have broken. So we're enjoying just that summer level kind of weather where you get a nice breeze and a good tan. I hope you can take a break and enjoy the sunshine or whatever your vibe is. Hold fast, stay true, take a little breather, and I will see you on Friday.